Hello there! The video you're about to watch is part two of my four-part gouache series I created for Strathmore. This video is going to be about specific gouache techniques as well as a few exercises to help you practice each technique. In the same way there is for every other video in this course, there is a free downloadable worksheet that details all the information I talk about in this video and you can find a link to download it in the description below. I hope this video will be interesting and helpful to you and if you have any questions at all, I'm always happy to try and answer them in the comments. And on these words, enjoy the video and have a lovely day. Hey everyone, welcome to episode two of our gouache series. In this video, I will show you three key basic gouache techniques that will allow you to use gouache in a big variety of ways. And I will also give you some exercises to go along with each technique to help you get more familiar with the medium. Each exercise has a downloadable exercise sheet template that you can get with the worksheet that goes with this video. So in this installment, I will be covering three essential gouache techniques, mixing, layering, and blending. But first, let's quickly talk about the basic supplies you'll need for these exercises. For the purposes of my demos, I will be using a variety of Strathmore papers, including cold and hot press watercolor paper and a few sheets of mixed media paper in white and black. I'll let you know on the screen which paper I use for which exercise so that you can get an idea of how each paper behaves. You don't have to use a different paper for each technique as I will. All I recommend is that you have at least some white watercolor or mixed media paper and a sheet of black paper if possible. For the brushes, I will mainly be using two medium sized mixed media angle brushes. We will be using two different colors a lot and to make life easier, I will be allocating one brush per color for the purposes of these exercises. You can obviously only use one brush for all the exercises, just wash it really well in between using each color. As for the paints, I will be using alizarin crimson and ultramarine blue, as well as a fair amount of white, all from the basic kit we put together in our first video. I will also use a little bit of cadmium yellow in the beginning. Feel free to use any colors that appeal to you, simply make sure that they are very different from each other so you can see them interacting clearly when painting, and make sure to have some titanium white on hand. Other items that we will be needing are jars of water. Generally when painting, two jars is ideal as you can have one jar to wash your brush and one jar for clean mixing water, which generally helps avoid muddying your colors. For this video, two jars is best because we can use one jar for each color we will be mixing. Um, you'll also want some kind of tissue paper or towel to wipe your brush to clean it and regulate the amount of water in it. And lastly, you will need a palette. You can use pretty much what you want for a palette. There are plenty of good, cheap plastic palettes out there, or you can use a plate or a ceramic palette. This is down to budget and personal preference, really. I know a lot of people prefer ceramic palettes just because the paint is a little nicer on it, um, but I think both plastic and ceramic work great. For this series, I will be using my ceramic palette. I already have my colors laid out onto it from a previous painting, but I topped up the colors I'll need for this video so that I have some fresh paint to use. So the first technique we are going to talk about is mixing and how to achieve good opacity with your gouache. Mixing is obviously the first step in any painting session and in the case of gouache, it is key in achieving the consistency needed for the degree of opacity you want to achieve. Mixing gouache takes practice and the more you mix it, the more you'll develop an instinct as to how much water you'll need to achieve the effect you want. A good step to practice is reaching the ideal consistency for a smooth and opaque gouache mix. That consistency is the sweet spot for gouache, and once you achieve it, you can easily dilute it further for a more transparent wash or add more paint for a thicker layer. The consistency of a particular paint when it comes out of the tube will depend on the pigment, the brand, and the age of your gouache, but ultimately, you'll want a creamy mix that drops slowly from your brush tip. You'll want it to look similar to double cream, and if the paint feels like it's sticking in globs to your brush, it's too thick. If you can see your mixing palette through the paint, it's too thin. You want your mix to cover your mixing surface with an even layer of color and don't want it to leave too much of a wake when you drag your brush across your mixing surface. Using gouache straight out of the tube is possible. However, it's not something I would recommend doing in the early stages of a painting. Rather, it's a technique best used sparingly and towards the end of the painting process. 
By using gouache straight out of the tube, you will achieve the highest opacity possible with it. However, undiluted gouache can be difficult to spread, especially when using a textured paper, so it's not ideal for big areas of paint. Add to that that the thicker the gouache, the more likely it is to flake off and crack once dry, and you'll want to make sure not to use very thick layers of gouache too much. Also, as mentioned before, the thicker the gouache, the more easily it will reactivate, so you want to avoid having to layer on top of a pure undiluted blob of paint. Gouache straight out of the tube is best used for highlights and precise details towards the end of a piece. In order to practice your paint mixing, here's a good exercise. Draw a grid on your paper and put a black dot in the middle of each square in the grid. Make sure you use a waterproof pen to avoid reactivating the ink when you paint over it later on. The objective of this exercise is to familiarise yourself with how little water gouache needs and how incremental changes really affect it. The black dot in the middle of each of your squares will allow you to see how opaque your paint is. Start by using pure paint fresh out of the tube in your first square. Do dip your brush in water first to avoid clumps of paint getting stuck at the base of your brush, but gently wipe off the water on your paper towel to make sure your brush is only slightly damp. Then pick up some of the pure paint and colour in your first square. Then dip your brush ever so slightly in your water, don't wipe it and mix it into the portion of paint you sampled from already. Keep repeating this action, only adding tiny amounts of water to your brush and mixing it into your already sampled portion of paint, gradually upping the water content of it by doing so. Try to obtain as smooth a colour gradient as you can, with no major jump in intensity. The more gradual your progress, the better you'll get an idea of how much water affects your paint and its opacity. Here's another exercise you can do to practice opacity, but in a slightly different way. Instead of using just water to affect your paint's texture and thickness to achieve more or less opacity, we're going to use white. Adding white to any of your colours will increase their opacity, but it will also obviously affect the colour itself. So practicing mixing white into your colours is a good exercise to experiment with. For this demo, we are going to use black paper, as it will allow us to see how much white can affect a colour's opacity more easily than on light paper, where white wouldn't stand out as much. Using a dark paper will also force us to keep our paint thickness consistent and will allow us to get a better feel of our paint's opacity. Painting opaquely on black paper requires our paint to be mixed properly and we can't rely just on the intensity of our pigment to cover our surface. Create a small grid on your black paper and practice adding more and more white to your paint, keeping your mix at the optimum opacity thickness for gouache to ensure good coverage of your dark paper. Basically, instead of adding water, as in our first exercise, you want to add increments of white to your paint, but you also want to keep your paint thickness the same throughout your grid. As you can see, the more white I added to my red, the easier it was to achieve high opacity. My pure red on the left is more affected by the darkness of the paper than my pink on the right. If you are struggling with layering a colour on top of a darker colour in a painting, you can experiment with adding some white to your paint, but make sure you add your white carefully so as not to affect your intended colour too drastically. Layering is probably one of the trickier gouache techniques. Gouache reactivates quite easily, which means it's very easy to ruin your piece by overworking your painting and end up with a muddy, messy looking result. As opposed to acrylics, gouache is not infinitely layerable, and there does come a point when adding layer after layer just makes it worse, and it's best to stop and start again, so understanding layering and getting a feel for your gouache is very important. Here are some tips to avoid unwanted reactivation. Try to use more diluted colours for the first layers and increase the opacity of the subsequent layers, making sure you wait for each layer to dry before applying a new one on top. The more diluted your first layers are, the more the paint will seep into your paper and the less it will reactivate. The more pigment is in your paint, the more the paint will sit on top of the paper surface instead of seeping into it, and the more likely your paint will be to reactivate. The more water is in your paintbrush, the more likely it is that the lower layers will reactivate, so make sure you control the amount of water in your brush as much as possible.
Also, the more you brush your new layer into the old layer, the more likely it is that the older layer will reactivate. <laughs> so another way to avoid that is to work your newer layer in as little as possible and be quick and decisive with your strokes. And my final tip is, before you layer, make sure your earlier layers are thoroughly dry so that they don't mix into your new layer. The exercises related to this technique are going to involve painting on top of various existing layers and will be aimed at making you practice control over your water content and paint thickness. I have drawn a grid with four rows on my paper and each row will be a separate exercise. The first row is to practice layering on top of layers of various intensity. Paint each space with a layer of gouache from heavily diluted to very concentrated. Wait until your whole grid is completely dry and apply a nice opaque layer of gouache on top of each square. Use conflicting colours so you can clearly see when your underlayer reactivates and mixes into your new colour. This exercise is less about seeing the results and more about feeling them. You'll get a better idea of how easily your paint reactivates when you do this exercise yourself as opposed to watching me do it on screen. Our second exercise is about being decisive with our strokes and experiencing the consequences of overworking our surface. Paint an even layer of opaque gouache over a whole row and wait for it to dry. Then, using an opaque mix, experiment with using quick, decisive strokes and working your paint in more. I recommend adding some white in your mix, something I forgot to do in my first example, as it will make it easier to see if your colours are reactivating. The reason you need to use an opaque mix is because the quicker you achieve your wanted opacity, the less you'll feel the need to go back in and work your colour in more. Our third exercise will help us get a better feel of the water content in our brush. Once again, paint an even layer of opaque gouache over a whole row, and after it is dry, go in with increasingly diluted paint over the top, and notice how much more easily your first layer reactivates the more water is in your new paint mix. Our final exercise will illustrate the importance of waiting for our underlayer to be thoroughly dry. Paint each of your squares with a fairly opaque layer of gouache and use a hairdryer to dry some of the squares, leaving the other side still wet. Then paint a new opaque layer of gouache on top, noting how easily your wet layers are mixing into your new layer as opposed to your dry layers. That's it for our exercises with layering, now let's move on to blending. Blending is a technique that can be both helped and hindered by the fact that gouache reactivates easily. Practicing layering, as we just did in the previous section of this video, will allow you to gain better control of your paint and fine-tune your instincts so that you can get a feeling of how much of your paint is reactivating and use it to your advantage, which will in turn inform your blending technique. Blending can be done a few different ways depending on your preferred painting techniques and the look you want to go for. It's important to note that smooth blending with gouache is better achieved with a minimal amount of water and by using the ideal consistency of gouache we talked about earlier. A lot of these exercises will rely on knowing at which stage of drying your gouache is and having good control over your water content, so they might take a little bit of practice, but that's what we're here for. There are a few different ways to blend gouache and I recommend you experiment with all of them to find the one you prefer. Knowing how to perform all of them will also allow you greater flexibility when painting as you can adapt your technique to what the situation allows. Our first technique will be making use of a slightly damp brush to blend two tones together. Start off by mixing your two colours to the desired consistency and then apply each colour on either side of your strip. Wait for 2 or 3 minutes for your paint to dry slightly. You'll want it to have a slight satin sheen rather than a wet sheen. Then use a slightly damp brush to blend the two together. To avoid dirtying each colour too much, make sure that you occasionally clean off your brush on your paper towel. You can dip it ever so slightly in water if you feel like you need to, and just keep gently rubbing in that transition area back and forth to make both colours blend. <laughs> 
don't give in to the temptation to add too much water just work your colors together with your brush and only add the tiniest amount of water if you're struggling to make your brush glide on the paper if you add too much water your colors will become muddy and you might overwork the area and start revealing the paper underneath and undermining the richness of your gouache layers Another way to achieve a nice blend or gradient is to mix your transition layers as you go and apply them next to each other. This might create more of a tiled effect and less of a smooth gradient, but it's a common technique with gouache as gouache is more often used as a fast paced medium rather than for detailed, very blended pieces. For this technique, mix your two colors and simply mix a little more of the color you are aiming for into the color you start with and apply each new mix next to the previous one to create your blend. You can use a tiny amount of pure water on your brush towards the end to smooth things out, but be careful as that can just as well ruin your blend as help it in the same way I showed you in the previous exercise. Alternatively, you can also mix your tones onto your paper when they are still wet, slowly working one color into the other. This technique requires adding one of your colors to a large portion of your painting and then counting on it reactivating slightly and mixing into your new color when you paint over it with it. It requires a bit of back and forth and working the colors together with only a tiny amount of water, but I personally use it a lot as it requires less mixing in the palette and I find it quicker once you get the hang of it. And finally, gouache can be blended more wet on wet in a similar way to watercolor, but this technique is less likely to achieve a smooth, controlled look. Gouache behaves fairly similarly to watercolor when used very wet, although in my opinion doesn't flow together as nicely and has a higher chance of looking streaky once dry, especially if you are mixing pure colors and not adding any white to them. For this technique, mix your paints with a lot of water and apply them next to each other, counting on the water to make the pigments flow together. This way to blend colors is less likely to result in a smooth gradient and the water might create bloomed effects in the paint. It's also more difficult to control where your paint goes, which might result in the paper showing through. And it means you can't use this technique over existing layers as diluted layers would not be opaque enough to cover an existing color and it is highly likely lower layers would reactivate and mess up your blend. It's a form of blending that can have its uses however, and like any techniques, it can be experimented with and used to advantage if you are comfortable with it. And so here you go. These were three of the gouache techniques I think are essential to practice if you want to get more proficient at gouache, and I hope they energize you to start your own paintings. And this is it for this video. I hope these exercises will be helpful to you and don't forget to have a look at the downloadable worksheet. I included everything I talk about in this video in it, as well as some extra tips, printable exercise grids and scans of my demos. Happy practicing and see you next week for our first paint along demo. Take care everyone and I'll see you soon. Bye.